you to imagine that there's going to be a disco pub soundtrack at certain points in this around the pub when people are about to go into a pub the disco comes up and then they go out it it stops as well it's a very open stage a bear a bear a bear stage uh, with just little props brought in for each for each scene scene one frankie queenie and jody are in separate spots spotlights frankie and jody are in barista or barista aprons it was a bloody awful day at work bloody awful day i hate being a barista i love being a barista i love the skill of a manual espresso having to be nice all the time grinding all the beans but not so much that they go sour laugh at all the stupid jokes of men who think they're funny espresso's temperamental only gives its best if you treat it gently little big shots I think they're so a bit like a pick-me-up a pickup come to think of it but at least i can get time off to go to auditions still it was an awful day awful day the machine broke down i was goosed goosed yes goosed <laughs> how <laughs> quaint nobody's been goosed since 1982 wasn't funny sorry my feet were killing me the aircon on the blink I've been on my feet i'd been on my feet since, since seven thirty they look at each other nod take off their aprons let's, let's go, go. To Soho. do you want to call andrew mm, maybe later if i feel like clubbing what about frank we had a bit of a barney let him stew this one's for us let's, let's go, go to Soho. Soho. the pub disco tram track fades in queenie comes to life polishing a glass but expecting a rush in Soho, it's quiet now, but in an hour or two it'll be heaving. Is that your bag? Well, keep it with your doll. Thought it was a bomb. No, seriously. Have you seen the posters? We have to keep a lookout since Brick Lane. Dizzy Jim Queen. It's drinking all that Red Bull, rots the brain. Mind you, I wouldn't say no won't kick him out of bed lovely eyes even if there's nothing much behind them what you like stop it you've work to do he puts down the glass glass moves to another part of the stage behind the bar what will you have doll pint of ipa just finished work have you going anywhere later i reckon gay will be packed tonight bank holiday weekend there, get that down, you. You've earned it, I'm sure. That'll be £2.20, please. Queenie freezes. The disco soundtrack fades. Jodie and Frankie re-enter. They are outside the Admiral Duncan. No, I'll get them. It's my round. Are you sure? You got them in the joiner's arms, remember? When was that? Karaoke night. You sang it draining men. Almost cleared the pub. Oh, my mind's a sieve. No, you're wrong. You got them at the Vauxhall. That was Sunday, the Sunday social. I don't remember. What is she like? What are you having? I'm to foaming mess. Gonna wash that Starbucks out of my throat. Amstel, please. Good idea. Me too. I'll just stay out here and have a fag. You can smoke inside, you know. Nanny hasn't made it yet a crime. Oh, it's so hot in there. And though I love a smoke, I can't stand the smell of other people's. Okay, okay. Won't be long. Don't go wandering off. Excuse me. Excuse me. He mimes, making his way through a crowded doorway. The lighting lowers, some filters. The disco music swells again. It becomes louder and louder and louder. And as it does so, the lights slowly fade to blackout. A huge explosion, followed by absolute silence. The lights come up abruptly on Jodie. There is smoke billowing everywhere and debris. It was weird, the silence. But that's what I remember. 
for a few seconds, nothing but silence. Too shocked to move, to speak. I could hear a bird high over St. Anne's churchyard and my own feet crunching on broken glass. Frankie! Frankie! People limping out, covered in blood. I saw a boy with nails sticking in his face. One boy got a nail in his eye. Suddenly there was noise again, screaming, Frankie! Frankie! Queenie carries Frankie out like a pieta, lays him on the ground. Frankie's face is unrecognisable with blood and his legs are at an awkward angle. Queenie too is covered in blood. His clothes are hanging off and he has a huge gash in his arm. Frankie is unconscious. Careful where you put him. Mind your glass. There's glass everywhere. And the glass. After that, he's still breathing. What are you standing there for, you dozy cow? Um, ambulance. Get an ambulance. Pull yourself together. There's help on the way and more to get out from inside. He makes to go back in. How many other hurt? How the fuck should I know? I saw one girl with her leg took off. Not much more than 20. I, I've got to go to help. Get them out. They need me in there. They're my people. Yes, of course. Queenie disappears through the smoke. Jodie holds Frankie's hand. Frankie groans and stirs. They told us afterward there were 1,500 nails in that bomb. There were 82. Okay. What's going on? I can't see. Shh. Quiet. Lie still. I can't feel anything. It's a shock. I can't feel my legs. The medics will be here soon. They're on the way. There's a woman's voice off stage, drunk and slurred. Hey, move over. I want a better view. I want to see that queer blood. Ha! Serves them right. Fuck right off! Knew it would happen one day. Serves them right, showing off like that in the street. Fuck you! She throws something off stage at the woman, her lighter maybe, if it is chunky. I can't see anything. I think I've gone blind. Where's Andrew? I need Andrew. Oh, hush, darling. Baby. We'll get him when we can. No, I need Andrew. I want to die. You know, it's lucky we didn't try to meet with Andrew after work. Would have brought the dog. <laughs> You're right. Can you imagine? If he licked the blood, he'd go crazy. The dog too. <laughs> Please, don't try to make me laugh. Queenie reappears with a woman out of the pub. He is holding her and checking there are no patches on her clothes, still burning. I had to find a fire extinguisher. I had to put her out. She was on fire. I smothered her as best I could. An orange flash of fire, a rush of warm air, a pain like an electric shock right through me. Look after her. Have you got any water? No. You should always carry water. I'll find you some, if I can. Queenie I is. looked, I looked in the pub mirror. What was left of it? Just a fragment. I looked in it and a stranger looked back at me, covered in blood. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? How can this happen here? We've always felt safe here in Old Compton Street. What happened? We could walk down the street hand in hand and no one turned a hair. We fell in and out of love. We quarrelled and made up. We could kiss in doorways and policemen smiled. What happened? This was community. This was family. This was home. What happened? 
blackout. Scene two, a hospital bed, Frankie lying in it. His face is covered with bandages. A hospital kitchen porter comes in with a cup of tea and a biscuit on a tray. Mr. Frankie, are you awake? Mr. Frankie? What is it? I brought you tea. I brought you biscuit. How the fuck do I eat a biscuit? I don't know. I'm no doctor. But everyone else have tea and biscuit. I don't want you to feel left out. Oh, I could murder a cup of tea. I know. I get you special cup. They have special cups for crippled people. Can use their mouth. Thanks a bunch. I get you a cripple cup. <laughs> cripple cup? <sighs> He's right, of course. That's what I will be. A fucking cripple. Even if I get an artificial leg. Of course it'll show. Everyone will know. He puts his hand to his face. I wonder what's happening underneath these bandages must be healing because every time i smile i can feel the tissue pull cripple cup <laughs> ah there i can feel the pull queenie arrives with a huge bunch of flowers make way for bossy flossy nightingale i bought you these what have you bought me flowers darling he tries to embrace frankie gently Ah, careful. Sorry. I know you can't see them, but you can smell them and feel them and nibble on a petal if you're peckish. I'm doing the rounds of my poor battered babies. There's so many in here. I bought up the whole fucking florist. Didn't seem right to leave you out. That's what Alina said. She's gone to get me a cripple cup because that's what I'm going to be. Some of my best friends are crips. At least they get leg loss often enough. <laughs> Don't. It hurts. Then stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're alive. Three aren't. And think of poor little Alan. What's happened to him? He took his right arm off at the elbow. They had to amputate his left hand too. That's awful. I know. He's never going to masturbate again. I've offered to help him out any time he's short-handed. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. What else should we do? Can't let the fuckers get us down. If we do, they've beaten us. <sighs> oh, Queenie. You're a tonic. I'd rather be a gin. <laughs> In Frankie's ear, confidential. They've got him, you know. Tommy Richards, the fucker who did it, admitted it right out on the other two, like he was proud of it. They say he'll get 50 years for it. When I get out, I'll go to church and pray for him that he rots in hell. I didn't know you were religious. I'm not. Just vindictive. When I think of what I'd like to do to him. What good does that do anybody? can't change the past. That's easy for you to say. You won't be a freak for the rest of your life. In a wheelchair. Not daring to show my face. You won't wake up screaming from the nightmares. You're forgetting I was there. I'm sorry. I'll keep it bottled up inside for your sake and the others in the hospital. I'm so sorry. So many here. Some have been discharged, but some will take weeks, months. 1,500 nails, that's what they said. 1,500 four-inch nails. Can you imagine how much that weighs? 20 kilos, maybe more. And that's what he brought into the bar with murder in his heart. I go to the pub to work as if nothing had happened. They've done it up, you know. You'd never realise that once it had been hell. But I see it as it was. Blackened walls, plastered down, the windows out. Sometimes I have to have a vodka just to face it. Sometimes I have a bottle. I've been so bloody selfish. 
You're entitled. Now pull yourself together, and I will too. They hug very gently, and the lights fade to blackout. Scene three. The hospital again. Jody is visiting. Frankie in bed, still bandaged up. Today's the day. Bandages off. I brought you some fruit to celebrate. They wouldn't let me bring champagne. I can't chew too well. I lost half my teeth. Ripped out by the nails. I can't have false ones yet. I know. I brought bananas. How considerate. I wonder if I'll recognise myself. I feel <sighs> under the bandages. I touch the scars and wonder what they look like. They'll heal. Of course they'll heal. Plastic surgery, wonderful these days. Cosmetic surgery, they call it nowadays. We've talked about it. No way. You could look like Sylvester Stallone. I could look like his mother. Where's Andrew? He should be here. He came to see me twice. Got too upset. He can't deal with pain or injury. It freaks him out. It's the same with death. He won't go to funerals. He spent his whole life trying to hold back time. That's ridiculous. He's only 32. You tell him that. He searches every day for signs of grey and looks for lines on his face and fat on his body. That's why he's always in the gym, always at the mirror. I used to think he was a narcissist, but now I know it's fear. I told him to go home. He was so jittery, so anxious. He did more harm than good. But even so, you should be able to rely on him. It's not his fault. He wanted to be here to do the proper thing. But then he took it out on me. He was feeling bad. No, it's the best way. Enter the medic with a wheelchair. Time for the bandages to come off, Mr. Bray. Sorry it's been so long. We've had so many in, it's pushed us all to breaking point. I haven't seen so much destruction since the IRA. Frankie and Jody reach for each other's hands, squeeze tight. Can I come with him? I'm afraid you can't. It won't take long. The medic helps Frankie off the bed and into the wheelchair. Frankie is reluctant to let go. The two go to the far side of the stage, leaving <laughs> Jody alone on the bed. During Jody's aria, which is in full light, the bandages are slowly, ritualistically taken off in full view of the audience, but in sidelight. Should have been me in that bar. It was all my fault. It was my round. I should have got the drinks. He said it was his turn because I got them at the Vauxhall, but he bought the second round. I didn't think. I didn't remember until later. Now I dare not tell him. He will always live with it. Every time he looks into a mirror and sees a stranger. Maybe he'll never walk again. The nails rip the shreds, the nerves to shreds in his legs. And these are so difficult to fix. Perhaps they'll amputate. They're all because of me. How can I look him in the face again? Every time I will see what I have done. I won't be able to confess. I think our friendship can survive from so much shame. The lights go down on Jody. The bandages have come off. We see Frankie's face. I don't think this should be a realistic makeup job of terrible scars. There are two ways of doing it. One is to have nothing at all so that everything we know about the seriousness of the injuries is in other people's reaction. The other is to do a literal defacement, such as a big red cross across his face, as if he has just been physically erased.
there. They're healing nicely. He takes some antiseptic on a pad and gently pats Frankie's face. Just a little weepy. Can I see? Is that wise? What are you saying? Something wrong with them? It's a bit soon. Maybe you should get used to... Show me. I want to see. As you wish. It's early days. You mustn't expect miracles. Ready? Yes. There. Frankie looks in the mirror with horror. He breaks down wordlessly, head in hands, shoulder heaving. You must be patient. We can start facial reconstruction in a month or two. We must let it settle down. You'll be able to go home soon. You're lucky to be on the ground floor. You don't need so much adaptation. I've lost him. I've lost Andrew. He'll never look me in the face. He won't be able to. I'll make him physically sick. Just look at me. You're still the same inside. But outside? No, it's over. He looks in the mirror again. Take me away from this bloody mirror. Blackout. Scene four. Frankie is at his flat in his wheelchair. There is a pair of crutches in the corner. The same scarring as before. It is 12 months later. His social worker, Jennifer, is looking over paperwork. They sentenced him today. Tommy Richards, the bomber. In court, they called him Thomas, which made him sound almost respectable. He got four consecutive life sentences. He said nothing. Aren't you pleased? Don't you care? It's too late now. I thought you would be pleased to see justice done. Nothing can put it right. They could hang him and it wouldn't put things right. It won't bring Andrew back. Frankie, he's been gone now almost a year. You must stop living in the past. Why? I haven't got a present and I sure don't have a future. What happened to your nice friend? The one I saw here on my first visit? Jodie? Oh, she tried. <laughs> she tried to take me out. You've got to get out of yourself, she said. Quite right, too. Wherever you are, you always take yourself with you. We went into a pub once, everybody looking at me. Everybody who could bear to look at me. <laughs> And then the whispering, look, it's that gay bloke who was in the bombing. Only some used other words than gay. I couldn't stand it. She couldn't stand it. We ended up sitting, staring at each other. We didn't know what to say. I haven't seen Jodie in months. There are other places. Where? Where? In your community. <laughs> yeah, I tried that. One day I got desperate for some company, for a bit of eye candy. Even if I have, couldn't have any, I thought, well, no harm in looking. I braved the rising panic that I felt sitting in my chair in the crowded bus. The driver didn't know how to use the ramp. It took ages to get off with everybody looking. I went to back door first, the leather club I used to go with, Andrew. <laughs> I forgot I can't use stairs and they're in a basement. So I went to Twink's, the club next door. The doorman looked me up and down. We don't want your sort here. You spoil people's evenings. 
They come here to enjoy themselves. The sight of you will put them off their drinks. <laughs> Go home. You don't belong here. That's dreadful. Your own kind. My own unkind. What makes you think queers are so wonderful? We're no better and no worse. Except the scene. Which is much worse. Much, much worse. Their world is full of hunks and pretty boys. That's all they want to know. And the drugs, of course. Don't forget the coke and the E's and the PCPs, the roofies and the lollipops, the speed and the fennies and the never ending fucking. He comes to a climax, then calms down. Jennifer strokes his hair. They'd sell their grandmothers to get a shag. Do you want another of your pills? <laughs> another pill? I'm no better than the rest of them. I wish Andrew had left me the dog. How could he? How would you exercise it? Oh, shut up! Don't remind me! Are you doing your exercises? What's the point? You'll never get out of that chair unless you work at it. What do you know? You know what the physio said. She knows nothing of pain. You've just got to ignore it and blast through it. Well, she can say that. She hasn't got nails in her legs. You have to try. Why? Where should I go? The doorbell rings. Jennifer waits to see if Frankie will get it, almost trying to force him to move. He tries, but only half-heartedly. Shall I see who it is? There's no need. I'm nearest the door. She goes. Bloody do-gooders. Ticking their bloody boxes and trying to be bloody helpful. Jodie comes into the room, a pause as they eye each other up, uncertain. Hello. Hello. When I heard the news, I had to come. What news? It was on the news. I never watch the news. Queenie's dead. Jennifer realises this is a private moment. To Jody quietly. I'll see myself out. Jody nods and gestures. Jennifer goes unobtrusively. How did that happen? Queer bashing, of course. What do you mean, of course? Because that's what life is like. Tell me. It's what they call happy slapping. Someone cuffs you round the head and someone else films it for the internet. Started as a joke. The joke got out of hand. There were five kids, only teenagers. The youngest was 14. He was going home from clubbing on his day off. And they set on him. It was on the south bank. There was no one else around. It was like something out of a clockwork orange. They punched him and threw him to the ground, but they kicked his head in. It was all recorded on a mobile phone. Someone found him an hour later. He died in hospital. Ruptured spleen. They hit him more than 40 times. I didn't even know that he was queer. So that's all right then. Don't shout at me. It's not my fault. I loved Queenie. Everybody did. When I came home, he'd cleaned the place, put a bunch of lilies on the table, and baked a chocolate cake. I know. I was there. He kept popping in. Are you okay, Chuck? Are you behaving yourself? Just checking. He was like a mother. Where have you been? I've missed you. What 
could I do? You wouldn't let me near. Besides... Yes? I felt so guilty. I never told you this. But now, with Queenie gone, I thought I had to. It should have been me sitting in that wheelchair. I was the one who should have bought the drinks. I should have been inside that pub. It's all my fault. Me and my memory. It was my turn. Queenie appears, a ghostly figure. It was Tommy Richard's fault. Remember him? Stop beating up on each other. I won't be having it. Do you feel better now for saying that? Yes. Yes, I do. Give her a hug. Then give me a hug. You forgive me. What is there to forgive? I thought you must be thinking you were brooding so. I thought it was preying on your mind what I'd done. It was everything. It was all so hopeless. Now, that's enough of that. Let me tell you something. A week after it happened, the bombing, you know, we'd got the rubble all cleared up. The windows were back in. But we hadn't done the painting and we hadn't any stools. Anyway, it was just before we opened, there was a ringing on the bell. I thought it must be post. We'd had that many cards. So I answered it. There was these Asian lads standing on the step. I had to say it, but my first thought was, here comes trouble. It's happening again. So I went to shut the door. But this lad holds out his hand. He's got this most ginormous card. And he says, we wanted you to know that we're all very sorry. We live in Brick Lane. We use East London Mosque, we know what it feels like. And one of the lads, the handsome lad he was, held out his arm to show me the scar. Well, I cracked up, cried my eyes out. These lads, well, they, they don't like gays. Where they come from, do they? But here they were. We'd all been through it. Of course, I asked him in, I made him a cup of tea. That's what kept me going through the months after. The memory of their kindness, what we'd all been through together. So, what are you going to do? So, what are you going to do now? There'll be a funeral. I should go to that. There'll be hundreds there. You'll know a lot of them. Yes. They've all been missing you. It'll bring back memories. Good ones, too. They haven't seen me. Seen what I look like. You think they give a shit? Andrew may be there. I can't let him see me. I'll disgust him. It's changed a lot. Look, do you want a hope? Do you want a future? You have to believe in yourself, in other people, that they can be good. You have to go. You're right. I have to go. Give me the crutches. Are you sure? I'm going in there on my own two feet. Jodie hands him the crutches. Don't forget to do your face. Jodie finds a tissue and takes off the scar makeup. Frankie is his handsome self again. See? Skin deep. You're still the same inside. Let's go. 
Good luck, Chuck. Queenie and Jody push the wheelchair out of the way so there is a bare stage. Light floods from the, from the rear as Frankie very slowly and painfully but determined moves towards it on his crutches. Queenie, Jody, and the medic frame him. An offstage choir recorded start to vocalise. You can do it. You can do it. Have the will. The world is waiting and it wants you. Forget the pain. This is more important. Frankie stops for a moment to get his breath back. They are worried he's giving up. No, don't give up. Don't turn back. We've all got to keep going. Believe, believe. Remember, you survive. I survive. You're alive. I'm alive. Frankie, I believe in you. The doctors are so proud of you. You do my memory proud. The doors are open for you. Hands reach out to steady and support you. We've been a crime, a sin, disease. But we've defied the judges and the doctor and the priest. We have come through AIDS, through bombs and knives and guns and hate. And still we come through strong. And stronger yet and stronger for we are one. We're with you, with you all the way. Your family is waiting for you. We are your family. We always were. We are your family. If you come through, you help to guarantee I'll never be forgotten. You, you boys inspire me so. Your courage is a marvel. You remember, you bear witness, even as you mourn. Frankie stops again and feels his face with wonder. I'm alive. Skin deep, skin deep. You are the same you always were. You're Frankie, and I love you. We still have work to, to do. We need to work with you. There is work to be done. There are rights to be won. We are not there yet, so near yet so far. We must be kind to one another. This is the way. There is no other. From heart to heart deep inside. Reach out to your people, to your tribe. Go for it, handsome. You're going home. 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 Home is waiting for you. Home will welcome you. You're coming home. Fade to blackout. The end. <laughs>